Hi, I'm Dave Cole. I'll be teaching this module on circuit breakers. Uh, so really talking about power getting out to, uh, to the rack level. Circuit breakers are, are very important in the, in the overall scheme of, of uh, data centers and data center power. If you have any questions as we're going through uh, any of this, please use the question comment box. Uh, type your question in. Uh, that will send an email to me and we'll uh, get back to you with the answer to your question. So let's go ahead and get started. Module topics. We're going to talk about circuit breakers and we're going to talk about circuit breaker coordination and circuit breaker protection. Right? Circuit breakers are very important. Uh, they're the thing that's, that's protecting your equipment from overloads and from short circuits. So it's very important that, that we understand how circuit breakers play into the whole scheme of things in the data center. We're also going to look at circuit breaker sizing. Right? So how big a circuit breaker do I need? So circuit breakers, what are they? They're a type of switch. So think about circuit breakers as an old time fuse. Uh, there's still fuses being used in the data center, by the way, but uh, circuit breakers are a little bit different uh, in that they can be reset. They're designed to protect our electrical equipment. We're trying to protect against overloads and also against short circuits. They're designed to trip at a given level. And we're gonna talk quite a bit about that because that's where we, we often have problems in the data center it's uh, because we're not sure when a circuit breaker is designed to trip. So these can be reset manually or they can be reset automatically. Really important that we coordinate circuit breakers inside the data center. These circuit breakers are designed to interrupt overloads and short circuits. So coordinating these uh, circuit breakers is important because we want the circuit breaker to blow or to pop as it's sometimes called. We want the circuit breaker to open as close to the equipment as possible. We want the least amount of equipment to come down as possible when a circuit breaker does pop. So it's complicated to do this and must be done carefully. I'm going to walk through an example of, of how this circuit breaker coordination happens. So here's a rack of equipment on the right and here's my PDU and I've identified a couple of different breakers that are here. Notice on the PDU I have a 50 amp breaker and that's feeding out to a rack power strip, a, a rack PDU, a right? bunch of outlets in the strip in the, in the rack. That strip has a 20 amp breaker on it. And then there's also a breaker at the outlet level and that's a 30 amp breaker. Okay, so things are going along fine and what happens if my server draws 25 amps? Well, that's fine because it's on a 30 amp breaker. Right? So I'm not going to blow that breaker. But the power is going to continue to go up and the next breaker that the power sees is 20 amps. So what's going to happen is that's the breaker that I'm going to pop. So when I plug in this 25 amp breaker, it doesn't pop the circuit on my outlet. It pops the circuit on the entire rack power strip. So what happens then? I lose all of my servers. Okay? This is bad circuit breaker coordination. This is not what we want, right? Instead, what if we switch these breakers around? And I had a 20 amp breaker at the outlet level and a 30 amp breaker at the rack power strip level. Now when I plug in this 25 amp circuit, or this server with drawing 25 amps, that's the breaker that I pop, I lose that server, okay? So my other servers are blissfully unaware that anything happened. This is much better circuit breaker coordination because I want, if I am going to blow a circuit, I want it to blow as close to the equipment as possible. I want to take down the least amount of equipment. Causes of power system failures, PDUs, circuit breakers, UPSs, other causes. Look at these two together. 70% of all power system failures involve circuit breakers, right? So it's very important that we look at these circuit breakers and understand them. And one of the things that, that we find in, um, when circuit breakers are a problem, one of two things. One is bad circuit breaker coordination. We just talked about that. The other is not understanding when the circuit breaker is supposed to trip. We'll talk about that in just a minute. There are two types of circuit breakers. One is a thermal circuit breaker that protects against overloads. Right? So if I get an overload, it's going to trip that breaker, open up the circuit, and therefore I'm not going to have any power going through there anymore. 
The second type of circuit breaker is a magnetic circuit breaker, and that protects me against short circuit protection, right? So I've got both of these situations that could possibly happen to me. The nice thing is a typical panel board circuit breaker has both thermal and magnetic elements. So it's protecting against both overloads and short circuits. A circuit breaker may need to handle short term circuit currents up to 2000 times its current rating, right? So you can get some very high um, currents that will go through these circuit breakers and they need to be able to protect against that. This is a very important uh, to understand how circuit breakers are sized. And we're going to look at a couple different things. This is a 20 amp breaker. That's its rated value. Okay. So if I go and say, I've got a 20 amp circuit breaker, that's what's called the rated value. That circuit breaker is designed to trip at 110% of its rated value. So that circuit breaker is designed to trip at 22 amps. Okay. However, we don't want to put 22 amps of power on that circuit. We also don't want to put 20 amps of power on there. We only want to put 80% of its rated value. So when I see a 20 amp breaker, I want to multiply that by 0.8 and say, ah, 16 amps. That's the most load that I want to put on that circuit breaker is 16 amps. If it's a 15 amp breaker, I need to say, ah, oh, I can only put 12 amps onto that circuit breaker. This is, besides circuit breaker coordination, this is the other problem that we see very typically in, in circuit breaker failure is because we've tried to load these up too much. I see a 20 amp breaker, so I put 19 amps on there. That may be okay, but I really don't want to go above 16 amps. So they're designed to trip at 110% but will continuously carry 80% of their rating, and that's as required by code. Um, the NEMA plug outlet nomenclature, this is really uh, more for reference than anything else. When we're going out and buying plugs or outlets and specifying those, this is how NEMA defines these. The very first letter that you see there, either the L or a blank, is the type of connector. In this case, an L means it's a twist lock connector. A blank would mean it's a standard plug. The five is the voltage rating. So in this case, five means it's rated up to 125 volts. The 20 is the current rating, right? So it can support 20 amps. And finally, the R means, uh, if it's an R means it's a receptacle, an outlet. A P means that it's a plug. So we talked a little bit about circuit breakers, um, a little bit about the uh, Neiman nomenclature at the end. If you have any questions, please use the question and comment box. Thank you very much for joining us. I look forward to having you at the next module.